And welcome back to another episode of The Credit Authority. Once again, I am your host, Rhonda Kulch, and I am so glad that you tuned in today. We always want to start our segment by thanking our sponsors, so thank you so much to Equity First. If you are experiencing credit and or financial challenges, feel free to reach out to any one of their trained professionals. They are bilingual, nationwide, and waiting for your call. They could be reached at 631 714 Four eight two two, And with that out of the way, we have a good friend of mine on the line, former Suffolk County Executive Steve Levy. How are you? Wonderful. Thank you so much, Rhonda. It's great to be part of your wonderful show that's uh, reaching out to a lot of people I hear. Yeah, you know, and it's feast or famine with you and I. We either talk all the time or we don't see each other at all. So I was so excited when you were able to make time to come on today because I know you've been so active with both of your companies. You have Common Sense Strategies and then you also have Center for Cost Effective Government. So tell me what you're doing now and you know, just so that we enlighten the people and how they could also get involved in some of your initiatives. Sure. Well, after uh, 26 years in public service as an assemblyman, a legislator, and a Suffolk County executive, I went back into the private sector in 2012 and was fortunate enough to team up with a great law firm of Campolo, Middleton, and McCormick. Uh, they're right in Ronkonkoma near MacArthur Airport. And um, I, I, I'm a part-timer with them as an attorney, so it frees me up to do some of my other loves. And my, my, where I really love to put my time is on my think tank. It's called the Center for Cost-Effective Government, and it's a not-for-profit educational think tank that acts as a taxpayer watchdog. When I was in government, we used to have all of these different groups that would come before the county or the state or the towns and ask for more money, and I said, we need somebody who goes before the legislature and says, hey, spend less money, spend less taxes. So um, that's what I do with my time for that. And then I have Common Sense Strategies, which I act as a political consultant, a, a writer to Newsmax. Uh, I'm a, a monthly contributor. I get on TV shows as a pundit every once in a while. So between those three things, it keeps me very busy, Rhonda. <laughs> So let's talk for a second about Center for Cost-Effective Government and your think tank. Give us a few examples of some of some projects that may have been in front of you recently. Well, I'll tell you what we have right now where people can get involved. It's with the MTA, okay? We have the governor, the legislature, and they're looking to say, all right, how do we get more money for this black hole called the MTA? Oh, well, maybe we'll raise fares. Oh, no, maybe we'll raise the payroll tax on Long Island businesses. And my organization pushes back and says, hey, how about you control your spending and you change your work rules and you stop your overtime or six-figure overtimes and $150,000 pension? So that's where we come in. And if people want to get involved in helping us on that, they can go to our website at centerforcosteffectivegovernment.org. And we'll engage them. Uh, a couple of months ago, we published a white paper on how uh, retiree health benefits for municipal retirees is is unsustainable. And it's, it's a system that's a hundred billion dollar plus obligation that's eventually going to collapse unless we do something about it. We expose the fact that overtime that gets factored into pensions will cost us $80 billion over the next 20 years. So that's what we do. We advocate for taxpayers to be able to keep our, our younger people on Long Island, our empty nesters here on Long Island, our retirees on Long Island. Someone has to be there for the taxpayer on doing that's what we do. And you said it the best by using the word watchdog. And I think what happens is that the normal consumer goes through their daily operations, right? They wake up, they go to work, they spend time with their family, and then they go to sleep, you know, wake up, rinse and repeat. So they're not spending enough time focusing on what's actually happening in their environment. Where do people learn about organizations like yours so they could become, I don't want to say better citizens, right, but more aware to what's happening in their backyard? Well, you know, you nailed it. It's like, why aren't taxpayers out there, you know, banging down the doors of legislators in the middle of the day to get them to control spending? Because they're working for a living. They're out there, you know, slaving to try to make enough bucks 
to pay the taxes that these uh, legislators are imposing upon them. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're just pandering and placating all these groups that want more money from the legislators. So uh, now, in theory, the legislators are supposed to be advocates for the taxpayers, but they're really not. They become advocates for those groups who help them on their campaigns, who are there in front of their face all the time, who they can ingratiate themselves with. And the taxpayers become missing or ignored. Uh, so if they want to get involved, again, going to my website at centerforcosteffectivegovernment.org would be a start. And we do have meetings, uh, you know, about three times a year uh, where people are welcome to come by and listen to some of our guest speakers and to try to get engaged if they'd like to. So, you know, again, you're, you're a gentleman that came from government and you watch what's happening. And I think more and more people right now are relying on the fact that when they are, you know, when they're casting their vote, they think they're voting for somebody that really may have their best interest. But we all know what happens once somebody gets elected. You and yeah, I, have I mean, personally have seen us wanting to take certain people out of government and out of office. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there are a lot, still a lot of sincere well-meaning and very good uh, elected officials on the local, state, and federal level. Uh, but it, there, it is a system that can get people caught up in the inertia. And it's just human nature when, as a legislator, you're just being pounded and seen by people who want to spend more money every day. You tend to think that that's what the average person wants. The average person, as I said earlier, is out working for a living and is not being heard. And it takes a really good legislator to understand that. Hey, these people might be in my space, the ones who want to spend all this money, but they're not really representative of the total population. The average person saying, hey, all the programs in the world that you're going to spend on don't mean a hill of beans to me. If I can't afford to live here in the first place, they're going to tack me out of my house and I've got to go to Carolina or Florida, or Tennessee, because I can't afford to live in New York, don't tell me about the worth of all these programs. you got to allow me to stay here in the first place. And that's where we come in with our center. And you know what's funny, too, is you think about every time there's a political campaign, you see people hitting the road and they're doing their door knocking. But they have this 30 to 45 second opportunity when somebody opens the door to allow them to express their message. Right. But when you think about what happens again, it's that after effect, you can hear what your constituents want to tell you, but you then have that battle. Do you find that when right now I know that Long Island, you know, we have this this battle of a divide between the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. Do you think that when people are going to the polls, are they thinking red and blue or are they really thinking about the message that that can, that that person is putting out? Well, definitely on a national level and, and usually on a state level as well, party comes into play uh, much more prominently. And that's in large part because a lot of these campaigns are being funded by these Albany and Washington operatives. So people are getting bombarded on the airways and they think in these national political terms. On the local level, there's once a saying, I think it was Fiorella LaGuardia, the mayor of New York City, said there's no Democrat or Republican way to pick up your garbage. You know, if, if, if people want to make sure that the services are provided adequately, that people are in there for the right reason, that they're going to be accessible for them if they have a constituent matter. So certainly that one-on-one -on -one touch with the local representative matters a lot more on a town board or a county legislature. And that's where the knocking on doors comes into play. I remember when I was first running as a kid of 25 years old back in 1985, <laughs> you know, the, the operatives told me, oh, just knock on these doors. I said, no, I'm going to knock on every door. I don't care if they're Democrat or Republican. And what I loved about that is I got a really great cross-section of what people were thinking. And by the way, they were all thinking the same thing, whether they're Democrat or Republican, stop raising my taxes, I can't afford to live here, even back then. But what I really liked about it, Rhonda, is it gave me independence. By getting that relationship one-on-one -on -one with people, I didn't have to go back to party leaders, special interests, or you know, a lot of these unions or big companies to fund me. I got elected with the everyday, the support of everyday people, and it gave me a great deal of independence. And that's what I would recommend for everyone running on a local level. I love it. Once again, we are speaking to former Suffolk County Executive Steve Levy. If you want to learn more information about what he is working on today, visit his website at the cost for 
Center for Cost-Effective Government. And until next time, stay tuned for our next guest. 